Okay, so good morning, everybody, and welcome to this uh, first class uh, of the course of uh, Web Applications uh, uh, 1 uh, that uh, will be, uh, will be jointly conducted by myself, uh, uh, Fulvio Corno, and uh, uh, Juan Sainz, uh, who will take care mostly of the part uh, uh, concerning the, the laboratories, the labs. Okay? So, I'm trying, as usual, to spend uh, uh, some time, the first uh, hour or so, in trying to describe you more or less what the, the course is about, uh, what you are going to do, and uh, what's the organization of the course itself. Um, I'm sorry, probably, for the quality of the audio being recorded, uh, because there's something that is not uh, working properly in this classroom equipment. Uh, so instead of recording directly from my microphone here, I am forced to record from, from the microphone inside the, the, um, the laptop, and this will uh, capture some noise in the classroom and some uh, problems. But uh, it's not working, so we always work, have to work with a plan B or C sometimes. Okay, so maybe enough of my picture here. Let's go back to recording the full screen. And uh, um, so the goal uh, of this course, uh, and we'll try to uh, say outline the goal of the course, and also in the context uh, of the other co courses that are more or less related with that. And uh, uh, the idea is start uh, uh, to, um, let's say, uh, be proficient, uh, have a good knowledge of uh, what uh, web applications are, especially in the modern type of uh, web applications. Um, and uh, uh, in particular, uh, what is concerning the, all the ecosystem around the JavaScript language. Mm -hmm. um, this is one, only one component of a web application, uh, the client side, uh, uh, the part of the application running into the browser. Mm -hmm. We'll see in a moment how the big picture will be completed uh, with the uh, uh, other courses. Uh, so basically, we start to have a look uh, at the overall architecture of a web application, which is a distributed application composed at least by a server and a client, and the client is running into the browser. And in the browser, uh, in recent years, the complexity and the capability of the browsers have, has grown a lot and allows nowadays to have most part of the application running inside the browser and running in this uh, language, which is supported okay, actually by all the browsers that include an interpreter for this JavaScript language. So first of all, we will uh, dive into JavaScript as a language, as a programming language. Uh, and then we'll see how what we can build uh, by leveraging on the capabilities of, uh, of JavaScript itself. And in particular, uh, we will see how can we create a dynamic front-end web application in JavaScript itself. Uh, and then we see the limitation or the difficulties in doing that, and we try to move uh, in the second part of the course uh, uh, to get the knowledge uh, of the what's that, a framework called the React, which is one of the many, mm, or several, not many, but quite a few um, um, JavaScript frameworks or libraries that allows us to create uh, applications with a faster development cycle because we already have a lot of. Uh, say functionality built in. We'll go to that. Um, in, in this course, the focus of the web application is mainly on the front end. So we'll do some, some back end because then no, no browser can exist, can open a page in, unless you have a, a server back end, but uh, it will be limited to the minimum possible amount of knowledge that is able to support our application. And this, uh, as I will mention, is inside uh, a bigger context, uh, which uh, where we are here actually in this course of the uh, Web Applications One. You know that this course uh, actually split into three: uh, two in a given in English, uh, one by myself and the other by Luigi De Russis, uh, and the third one was given uh, in Italian by Enrico Masala. And we uh, strive to keep uh, as much as, la as la aligned as possible. So basically, all the material for the three courses is the same, uh, the same slides, the same exercises, and so on. 
and the exams uh, are also identical. I mean, the same exam text goes for the three courses uh, in the same dates and so on. Uh, of course, I'm not telling the same exact words as, as my colleagues, uh, because uh, maybe each of, each of us will approach the topics in a different way, but uh, uh, rest assured that the, the, the program of the courses and the kind of exam will be 100% uh, uh, identical and aligned, hmm? which is not always true, but in this case, we're trying to do that. And uh, as, as we mentioned, uh, uh, the focus here is on the first idea of what a web architecture is, and especially the focus will be on the front-end programming. Uh, where is the back-end programming? Back-end programming is in a course called the Web Applications 2. You can see the fantasy of engineers at work, uh, one and two. And uh, um, that is an optional course in the second year. Uh, so next year, if you want, you can choose it from the tables of the optional credits. Uh, um, that okay. Ba basically, we'll focus on the backend development and, spe and especially the, the scalability uh, issues. Um, a bit also security, but a lot, mostly uh, scalability. No, well, when, when we are in the front end, we only have one user to care about: the user using the browser. When we are in the back end, we have maybe millions of users. Hmm? No, okay, maybe not millions because we are not. Uh, Maybe working in so large websites, but basically we have a lot of uh, uh, um, simultaneous uh, uh, users uh, to, to serve, and so on. scalability and performance becomes uh, more important there. In between, we have <clears throat> another course, which is another um, say course which is suggested for some uh, so for some of you, depending on the on the orientation that you took, uh, which is called distributed system programming. And uh, it's basically trying to give you the more, uh, let's say, a bit wider background uh, about two topics. One is uh, uh, distributed programming is not just a web system. So the web is the predominant, uh, the dominant, uh, let's say, um, environment in which actually we are building distributed system, but it's not the only one. So there is not just the client-server interaction that we are accustomed to in the HTTP protocol. Uh, and so here we'll try, in this course, we'll try to, to widen a bit uh, to other types of distributed architectures and uh, um, some also foundations uh, of, uh, of this kind of system where actually every little problem becomes <laughs> immediately very hard because you have different nodes that have different and partial views of the information of the whole application. So all the topics of synchronization and, and the and the consensus building and so on in distributed systems uh, and reliability also will be described in this course by uh, Professor um, Sisto. Mm. And so this is the uh, basically triple of distributed systems, uh, triple of courses, where two of them are about the web and the third one is about uh, everything else, and so uh, the bigger picture. And they also are related in some way with two other courses. Uh, one is the um, Human computer interaction course, which is uh, again an optional course uh, that, by the way, is uh, the teacher are uh, the same as this course, so uh, the Russes and myself, uh, but I'm not promoting myself. Uh, we have enough students, but if you if you are interested in this course, uh, we'll try to uh, reason about uh, what is the best way to design an interface. So in web application, we will learn how to code, of course. Okay. But what happens is that sometimes uh, what we call will be ugly or what we call will be unusable or very hard to use. Okay? So every time you open a website of the Polytechnic, you know what hard to use uh, and unusable means. Okay? Because you have to fight against something which is not following you very much or very well. Okay, in this course, we'll try to learn about the process for designing not just web application or mobile application, but usable, easy to use. Uh, um, uh, in general, uh, interactive application. So if any of you are interested, uh, you can pick this course for next year. And another optional course, which is strongly related to this path, uh, is of, of course uh, the course of uh, uh, mobile application development, uh, given by Professor Malnati, which also gives uh, web applications too. Again, it's a course in the, an optional course in next year, uh, which is basically the, the only course in the, in the master degree that uh, talks about mobile development uh, 
uh, native uh, application uh, in, in mobile devices, so Android and iOS and stuff like that. Uh, is uh, mm, of course in web application one and human computation we also we also work towards uh, mobile applications, but they would be mostly web applications navigated with a mobile phone. Okay, um, in, in for novi for novice uh, native applications. Okay, we'll go into that course. So this is a, a suggestion of, of a possible path if you are interesting interested in, in this kind of topics. Of course. Uh, this, uh, this course is the only one which is mandatory for, for everybody, for everyone. So maybe not all of you are interested and you want, of course, you spend your credits in some other topics uh, um, that uh, are more so, uh, uh, kind to, to your interest. But nevertheless, this the, the, the big picture of which we are cutting a, a first piece uh, in this uh, first uh, 60 hours, in the first six credits. And uh, these four blocks uh, more or less give you uh, an idea of the structure of the path that we are going to take. So we start uh, from learning JavaScript as a language. Okay, JavaScript uh, has a bad history <laughs> as a language. Uh, it's so often described as a very ugly language, a very strange, uh, full of very strange quirks uh, or strangeness, strange behaviors. Uh, and it is actually. But it's not only a strange and uh, and uh, hateful language. Uh, it also has, especially in the modern versions, a strong foundation. Okay, so it's not just a scripting language for writing two or three lines there, but there is a, a solid, let's say, um, programming model uh, behind that, and a very strong orientation towards uh, distributed and asynchronous uh, uh, application, especially asynchronous one. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn. Uh, Basically, the, the, the main programming patterns uh, of, of this language. So we don't want just to learn to write two or three lines of JavaScript here and there, but to understand what happens. Mm. Um, so will be the, the first uh, uh, part of the course, the first uh, uh, um, third, basically, uh, of the course. We spend some time in understanding uh, the browser as a runtime environment. So not just a browser for displaying HTML pages and uh, styling them with style sheets. Of course, we'll have to learn that uh, or those uh, say topics, but uh, there will be the easy part, basically. You know? We'll try to be as, as quick as possible and also maybe give you some, some readings to do on yourself because this, this is the easy part. It's something that in most uh, other universities, these topics are done in the, in the bachelor degree, not in the master. Okay. But we, we try to give the minimum amount of information to go forward and basically uh, jump uh, immediately into the uh, how JavaScript integrates into the browser and the object model for programming into the browser. Mm -hmm. And that will be the, the follow-up uh, of this language, how, how it is implemented and how we work uh, in the browser itself, which is a uh, say strongly asynchronous environment. Mm -hmm. um, so at this page, uh, at this point, we have a, a basic understanding of a browser and now the code can be run into the browser. So we are ready to create a simple web applications composed also with, um, on the server side and, uh, and the client side in JavaScript. Um, we'll try to keep the server side to a minimum and we'll use uh, one possible server technology, which is Node. That also is uh, interpreter runs uh, JavaScript. So uh, in this course, not for not make it too much uh, um, complexity or chaos, uh, we'll uh, we'll run JavaScript in the client in the browser, which is the only option, and also JavaScript on the server, which is one of many possible options. Uh, but at least we keep consistent with the knowledge that we gain with the uh, programming language. Mm -hmm. uh, we learn how to build a simple application, and especially. Uh, how uh, the server can provide some APIs, uh, some services, basically, to the front-end application. So for, our, for us, the focus will be on the front-end, on the JavaScript that we run in the browser, but this JavaScript sometimes will need to you know, check your password or get some data or store some information. And this information is stored on the server side, you know, because when you shut down the browser, you want the, this information to be persistent. And so it will be a communication between the client and the server. This communication will be in the form of uh, APIs, application programming interfaces. So calls, remote calls that you could do into the server. 
basically we'll use the server for this sort of remote storage or authentication storage uh, and so that will be the role and we we'll learn that uh, towards the, the end of the course when we need to put everything together and then we have the 40% uh, of the course more or less uh, will be uh, on the React framework itself. So React is a very large library. No, it's not a very large, a very powerful, I would say, uh, library uh, in JavaScript that allows us to create uh, uh, so-called single page application. So application running in JavaScript into the, the server, into the, the client. And of course, it's not just a library, it's called the framework. So it, just, it doesn't just give you some functions to use, but it gives you a way you know, to uh, set up and to think about your application. So we are uh, giving up some freedom. I want to write the code that we want. OK, you can write JavaScript what you want. But uh, you will face a lot of uh, smaller or bigger problems in coding. So a lot of maybe details for synchronizing information and so on that will be hard to handle. So you rely on a framework that does some of the heavy lifting for you, some of the work for you. And of course, you have to abide by the rules of the framework. So the framework say that you, uh, for creating a form, you must use this kind of syntax, this kind of method. OK, you have to use it if you want to use the framework. But in return, so you follow the rules, not just of the JavaScript language, but also of the framework designers. And But in return, the framework will do a lot of uh, of better work uh, uh, for you. Hmm? So it would be a, a, a different way also of, of approaching development. We'll touch a bit uh, the development uh, with just basic, uh, the, what they call it, the vanilla uh, JavaScript. Uh, we'll see <laughs> that uh, we have a lot of problems uh, and uh, we'll jump into this, which is one of the three or four major frameworks today. Hmm? Also from the point of view of uh, uh, industry uh, demand. Hmm? OK, so this is the, the big picture. So there's a lot of uh, uh, stuff to cover. OK, the only you know, uh, line is, uh, uh, continuous line is uh, JavaScript. And we start today with JavaScript. We will do the exam in JavaScript. That will be our uh, um, thread no? that runs uh, throughout the course. I just wanted to say that we are going to react uh, the long way. So there's uh, a lot of uh, training courses that you find also online or whatever that jump directly here. They will teach you to create a web application in React. And teach you the minimum amount of JavaScript uh, to be able to write uh, a web application in React. That's not our goal here. That's the end point, of course, uh, being able to write a uh, uh, front-end application in React, uh, but uh, we aim, at least we aim, uh, at giving you also some, also some solid foundation in JavaScript. So not just the bare minimum amount of JavaScript to, for writing React, uh, because maybe tomorrow React will, will change. Uh, if we had uh, designed this course uh, probably three or four years ago, we wouldn't have chosen React, but Angular. And uh, in two or three years, uh, who knows whether React will be still the, domin the dominant framework, OK? So we cannot bind you too strongly to one specific framework. We want to give you the foundation for being able to switch to different frameworks according to the, let's say, industry where you're going to go, where the constraints are there. You can have the, you know, the, the, the background knowledge, uh, not just to be a coder in React, uh, but a designer of a web application, whatever the framework we are using. We are running one of them, but uh, uh, we hope that the, the time we are spending with basic uh, going deep into some of the language features will pay off uh, okay, in understanding better what happens here and what may happen in other frameworks. So just a quick note uh, about the design. This is the, how the, these topics will unroll during the, the weeks. Uh, you see that the semester has uh, 14 weeks. Uh, here we have listed only 11. That's because the last weeks uh, will be, uh, let's say, devoted more for exercises uh, and not for, let's say, additional information or um, additional, let's say, topic of information. Mm -hmm. We'll try to um, run faster at the beginning so you have, you have more time for exercising at the end. So uh, this ha will happen into these hours. Um, the classes will be on Tuesday morning, 
We already know that because we met in this uh, nice classroom. Um, and there will be lectures and exercises all mixed together. There's a lot of practical information here. So I have PowerPoint open, but I also have uh, uh, Visual Studio Code open and we'll jump uh, from the slides to the code for the exam live examples and so on or at all times. Okay, I won't be able to speak a lot on, on the slides without uh, ma making examples. And in many times uh, we will skip some slides and uh, the same topic we'll try to make examples inter interactively to, to illustrate some topics. Then you have the slides, of course, for, for reviewing, for, <laughs> for, for reading them, uh, but um, sometimes Let's try not to be too boring. That's why one of the suggestions I gave you, if you want to bring your laptop to, to, the, to the classroom, maybe when we do the more interactive parts, um, we can do that together. Uh, on Thursday, except this week, uh, we'll have the labs. Uh, you, will be split, you will split into uh, two groups, one at 8.30 and the other at 10 in the morning in the main eye room across the, the, the hall and uh, um, yeah this is wrong this alphabetical is wrong I will explain you in a moment uh, we'll start with an uh, alphabetical split uh, but then we'll change it um, when I tell you how, how the labs work work um, of course as it, with any programming course uh, the labs are the most important part uh, of the course itself so I uh, if you have trouble with the timetable, with the schedule, in any way, I will encourage you to follow as close as possible the, the activity in the lab. This is where actually you, you feel uh, and where you actually learn uh, uh, to, to, to use the, the things that I'm just yeah, talking about. Uh, in the first week, uh, we will use the hours of the Thursday for class instead of lab. Okay, So the lab will start in the second week. Uh, which will be the 10th of March, something like that. And this week, this Thursday, uh, you will have to bear with me for uh, another three hours. Of course, this will be, it will mean that in this week, we are uh, doing uh, 1.5 hours more than allocated. And uh, I promise this hour will be saved at the end of the course. Okay, So at the end of the course, we will have no more. We will have less, less classes uh, because we are doing some more than here. Hmm? We are not, uh, you are not stealing your time. Okay, um, the classes. Uh, there's nothing. There's not much uh, to say, except that we are trying to record everything, hmm? technical issues permitting, and uh, we'll publish uh, the, the, the recording immediately after the end of, the, of each of each class. Um, I'm not streaming live uh, the lectures, okay? Because I don't want to add one other layer of technical issues. Hmm? I don't think there's not much uh, sense also in, in doing that, um, since we are here and we should be here. Uh, sometimes uh, hmm? uh, there will be, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, uh, some topics which are easy enough uh, for you to read on yourself. Uh, maybe it will be a video or a link to a tutorial or something like that. Uh, uh, because it would be really boring to sit here by listening to a person uh, talking about something that you can read on yourself uh, uh, in half an hour or something like that. Where there are no conceptual issues, uh, maybe two or three times, that there will be two or three topics during the course uh, where we give you a reading or some something to learn, and then in class we'll do some the practical part uh, co in concerning that, that topic. Okay, Just uh, for having a better usage of our, of our time. Um, the labs uh, will start uh, in, uh, let's say, uh, next week, I said. Uh, again, uh, the text of the labs will be published uh, on the course website. You already have the link. And uh, we'll ideally, the exercises we, we give should be doable during the lab hours, uh, but the experience tells us that um, 1.5 hours uh, is, is the, mer the minimum amount for doing the exercise. If you read it in advance, at least if you read the text in advance, okay. Otherwise, you can finish it on your own. You know that after some time, we'll also publish a solution. At least after one week. So I don't want you to give. I don't want to give you the solution too soon because I would be um, discourage you for trying on yourself. Okay, the solution will be there, but when when you 
will no longer need it because you will have already solved it by yourself. Hmm? I'm being a little ill here, but uh, I think it's for you. Um, in the labs, uh, okay, the first labs uh, we will uh, we will split uh, basically uh, in half. Uh, um, we will not have probably too many issues about the number of people in the room. But I will ask you in any case to try to split uh, in half, uh, and we'll see the alphabet uh, for splitting you, uh, be, in, in order to be able to, to follow you, okay, to help you in, during the, the development. So if too, too much people comes at 10 in the morning because it's uh, you know, more convenient, uh, then it will be difficult for us to follow everybody. Hmm? Uh, but this is just for the first uh, two or three, three weeks. Um, we will have three simple labs. Okay, so in week number two, three, and four, or maybe five, I don't remember, uh, we have normal labs where we give you the exercise and you work on your own on the exercise itself. Just for, you know, warming up with JavaScript. Then uh, we will have two big labs, uh, we call them, which are stretched, each of them it will be stretched uh, uh, across four weeks. Okay. These four, these two big labs, so uh, three or four labs for warm up and uh, for warming up, and then four weeks uh, will be the big lab number one, and the other four weeks will be the big lab number two, and then we are at the end of the course. Um, these big labs are, let's say, bigger exercises that are split into four steps, each of them. Each step will be for a week. So. We already know at the beginning of the, of the stretch uh, what is the final goal in, in four weeks. Uh, and we'll tell you, okay, in this week, work on this part. In the second week, work on the other part, and so on. You can work uh, on that uh, um, in group. Okay, so, uh, so we can, you can create groups of three or four people and uh, uh, on your choice, okay, of your choice. Uh, and uh, uh, okay, this, uh, I forgot to put a link uh, for. I will give you the link uh, of, a, of a Google form where you can submit the composition of your group. These groups are only for the development in the big labs. Okay, uh, so the goal is that you can work with uh, three or four friends uh, on, on these labs, uh, and if you want, you can submit uh, at the end of each big lab, so twice, uh, the work you do you did. Okay. So you will have uh, one repository on GitHub where you can work uh, on the project. You work together and you submit. If the project is uh, successfully submitted, you will get up to one point uh, at the exam for each of the big labs. Okay, so it's a way no, to help you, motivate you in following the labs, uh, in doing the exercises throughout the world, the, world, um, the, the weeks uh, and the two hours. The, the course uh, and the reward are two points uh, at the exam. Okay, it's not mandatory. If you don't want, it, you can will not check it. Uh, of course, one point will be a shallow evaluation, so we are not going to go line by line, but have a look at whether it works, whether it's reasonable, and so on. Okay. Um, of course, this will be okay. Take starting in in one month from now after the first uh, simple lapse. So you can just uh, start now by thinking uh, about the composition of the group. Okay, And then every group will uh, uh, you know, uh, follow the labs in one hour. So right now, after when we start the big labs, there will be some groups that will be allocated to the first lot, slot of the labs and some other group with the second slot. So if you have other courses, maybe that are they have some scheduling conflicts uh, try to create a group with some other friends who have the same conflicts so that you will together choose a slot that better fits uh, your schedule what's that a question yeah no so the question was whether you can create a group mixed with the other course uh, it would be a, a, a nightmare <laughs> uh, from the point of view keeping track of the scores uh, or and all of that so you can work with them as friends, but then the submission should be done by a group uh, inside the each of the courses. Sorry, but uh, we already have too much complexity here. Um, OK. Um, so I was really 
bad in preparing this slide because I forgot all the important links. But anyway, uh, all the information about the course, uh, including the slides and everything else, uh, is on this website. And this is the link that should have been on the slides, uh, but you, you, I already shared it with you in probably several times or seven times in via email and Slack and whatever else. So you already know that. And uh, we try to keep uh, this website updated. Okay, so you have the information about the schedule. And mainly in the schedule section here, we are uh, trying to keep you informed about the different topics. Uh, we'll try, we tend to publish uh, for most of the cases, we already have the slides ready. And so we will publish them in advance one week ahead, something like that, so you can have a look. Uh, you know which topics will be in each lecture and so on. And uh, after the lecture, we'll have the links uh, to, the, to the recording of the lecture itself. Okay, so that will be the, the reference point uh, of, the, of the course uh, with all the schedules, the labs, and so on. Mm -hmm. So if you want, uh, you, you can have a look there. Um, basically for, for following the, the course for or any information that you need. We also have one uh, um, organization on to GitHub, which is called, uh, which is shared between, between the English and the Italian course, so shared between the, all the three courses, um, and where we, where we will work and share material as we go. Uh, there will be one repository here, um, this is called Materials, where we will publish all the slides and all the text of the lab and so on. So basically, it will be a copy, a mirror of what you already have in the in the website. Uh, it could be convenient because if it's, since it's a GitHub uh, repository, you can clone it on your computer, and every now and then you can pull and merge the new the the, the, the new material with just one click instead of going and download the PDFs one by one. Okay, but of course it's up to you. It just uh, you know that the material is the same for the three courses, and then we have a. Uh, Separate repository will create a repository for the labs. So there will be a one, lab one, lab two, and the three here, where we have the skeleton of the text and the skeleton project of the labs themselves. And also some Wix repositories. Uh, there are just uh, you know, working repository for the exercises that we are doing here in class. So when we are doing some examples or whatever, I will do them into the Wix 01. Uh, folder inside this web repository. So at the end of the class, I will just push the modification to GitHub. So we, you will have uh, uh, all the code that you wrote, uh, good or wrong, <laughs> that I wrote uh, in the classroom, in, available immediately after the end, just after the end of the, of the class. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's an easy way of having all the material instead of downloading 27 uh, little small files that will be all in this repository. I sort of assume that you are more or less familiar with using GitHub. Uh, maybe some of you uh, already took some um, um, say software engineering way they, where they use, uh, teach it, uh, say, deeply how to use that. But if you have some, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about uh, GitHub, just let me know. We'll try to share some links uh, to some uh, short tutorial or just for getting started, okay? Um, that's it. The, the other link are the, okay, the YouTube pages for, for, the, for the classes, for the recordings uh, that I will publish also, of course, on the Portale della Didattica, so that you can you know, see them on the app of the Polytechnico, but maybe for some people it would be so convenient to have you, uh, them on YouTube, so I will publish them in parallel in both lines. And most importantly, we know, you know that uh, we are going to use uh, uh, Slack as a tool for collaboration and communication. Where do we have it? It's here. Okay, so we have this uh, uh, Slack organization called the WA1 2022AJ, okay, which seems like a secret password, but uh, it's just uh, um, the acronym of the course. Uh, basically, we have one channel general where only the teachers can write, uh, and we will use it for announcement, for sharing material, for giving uh, notices and any kind of announcements or, or, or just say general communication. Then uh, there's a, a channel called discussion where everybody can write. So I think this should be the, the primary means of communication among us. So if you have a question, if you have a problem, if you have anything, you can write in this uh, discussion channel, 
and uh, we will uh, read every message here and we'll try to respond to every issue that you are raising here. Of course, you are also free to, <laughs> to discuss among yourself or to respond to your friends or to your colleagues' questions or ideas or whatever. Okay, so we'll be the channel for discussing about the course uh, where they are fully say, in a peer-to-peer uh, -peer discussion. We, we promise that we read everything there. And, um, and we'll try to give you uh, reasonable, uh, reasonable answers in reasonable time, um, usually. Uh, we are not going to use uh, email for anything, okay? So I will promise uh, not to send you lots of emails or announcements to the app because you already have thousands of emails for, per week. Uh, uh, all of them are very interesting by the Politecnico. I don't want to add uh, uh, additional mail by, by, by the course, okay? So I promise you not to flood your inbox with uh, the mails about the course. I will put all the communications here in general, basically. And in return, you will promise me that you will not send me emails. Uh, but for anything, you can write in discussion. If it's a priv private matter, then you can write a um, direct message here in, on, the, on the Slack channel. That's in direct message session here. But uh, in, in, many, in most of the cases, probably the discussion channel will be better because the issue you're having will be most likely shared with other people, okay? There's also a random channel where we can, we can use it for chatting, for joking, for finding um, group uh, members uh, when you're trying to, to set the group uh, where we are not uh, going to, okay, we can have a look uh, every, every now and then at this channel, but it's not uh, for, from the, Teacher's point of view is not something that we have to respond, okay, in general. So the more, the more free form uh, communication. By the way, if you want uh, into this uh, Slack platform, you can create your own groups. So when you're going to work on the big lab with a group, uh, you can create a, a private chat among yourself. Uh, and if you want to, so all the communications about the course uh, will, can be done inside this uh, the same platform instead of having the Slack and then the, 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 the WhatsApp group and whatever else. But it's uh, uh, your choice. What you know is that uh, uh, the messages that you exchange in direct messages here or in private groups uh, are not visible by us. Okay, So you're free to write uh, uh, what you want and to tell yourself what you want in this platform. Even if we are um, uh, the owners of the platform, we cannot see <laughs> private messages of, of the users. Okay. So don't be afraid to use it. So that is a central point for our communication in the course. OK, uh, the source of point about the exam, which is also an interesting topic. Um, the exam is will be a project developed individually. OK, so we will have, we'll publish one project per, per exam call. OK, uh, and this project will be published 20 days before the day of the exam. So we, you will have 20 days of time for developing one project, will be, will be basically one React application, similar to the one that we are going to develop in the last lab. So basically this, the same type of activity. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, you, you will work on your own, on your time when you want, as long as you submit the project before the day of the, of the exam call. So if the exam will be, I don't know, in 20 of June, you have time until the 19 of June at uh, 23 hours, 59 minutes, 59 seconds, and something like that, um, to submit your, your project. Mm -hmm. On the day of the exam, we will collect uh, the submissions and start evaluating them. Okay? Uh, you, you are free to work uh, on your own, you are free to work with your friends, as long as everyone will submit uh, his own uh, or her own uh, individual project, okay? So not, it's not, you cannot work together with, submit the same project in three people. Mm -hmm. You can work together, help, help each other, of course, uh, but then you have to submit your project. And uh, to, to, to ensure that, uh, after the project submission, we will be the most, uh, say, part of the course evaluation, uh, we will have uh, an oral discussion about your project. So then it's not uh, an oral, say, questioning. You're not going to ask a theory question or, so, or anything else. We will open your project together, and we will ask questions about your project. 
what you did here, where is the function that does this functionality, how, this, how is this component working, and so on. So basically, it's a check about your knowledge of the project you submitted. If you really did your project yourself, it would be a no-brainer. So just come here and tell us what you did. Okay, maybe uh, we found incorrect in evaluating the project. With some, we found some bugs, some issues, and the discussion will be there. But we are, will not be evaluating the bugs itself or the problems because they will already be part. The problems in the project will already be part of the evaluation marks that you get for the project. In the oral discussion, we will only evaluate your knowledge about the project. Uh, we give six points. Usually, my default is uh, five points. And uh, um, if you are really brilliant, uh, you go to six. If you have some problems, you will go down to four. And if you have a lot of problems, I will send you away because it means that uh, uh, you are not uh, the real author of the of the project. Hmm? More or less. Hmm? So 24 plus six plus two points from the big labs. So we have a, a bit of slack, of course, for, for, for getting over the threshold of 30, which is the score that everybody is aiming for. OK, we'll come to the more detailed rules of the exam or to submit and so on uh, later on. But the idea is that uh, I don't want to say that there's nothing to study for this course. Just we have to learn to build projects, build them well, correctly, in time. Mm -hmm. but the, the theory is a very practical theory. Hmm? So what is important is to, you know, to, to start working them. And um, OK, so this is a, a, a sort of a, some more details about the exam, the, but what we already uh, said. Of course, the technology about the exam are the same that we're using in the lab. There's no surprise. OK, um, about. Uh, Oh, okay, it's a bit embarrassing talking about resources about JavaScript because there are really thousands of websites and repositories and tutorials. Uh, it's such a uh, JavaScript is the most is the most popular language today, mm -hmm. uh, together with uh, Python, C Sharp, and Java. Basically, are the most popular uh, language, but by by far, uh, since the, all the web is dominated by JavaScript, uh, so you can find a lot of resources. Uh, the, of course, in the uh, React, when we are and we will we will deal about React. Uh, will there will be all the documentation on the official React website? Uh, I, I give you more space uh, later on when we start the topic because they are also restructuring their documentation in a much better, more durable way, but we talk about that later. But in general, about uh, JavaScript, uh, there's a very, this very important website, which is a cornerstone for web developers, uh, the Mozilla Developer Network. So it's a website uh, created by the people that are running the Mozilla Foundation, Firefox browser, and something like that. And they are curating a lot of documentation about web, web technologies. And so they are, this website is one of the most uh, up-to-date and complete uh, uh, reference points. Uh, there are reference, mainly reference points, and uh, some tutorials, some instructions about the, all the web technologies. Of course, we'll be mostly focused about JavaScript, but not only. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about MDN, so the first place to go <laughs> to look so for some information about JavaScript will be there. Mm -hmm. There are also some books uh, that I can mention here. Mm, but I'm not suggesting or requesting you to, to, to buy any of them. These are basically the books that uh, we are we used to collect some of the material, but most of the material is not uh, coming from the books. It's coming from other also websites. Uh, uh, this uh, no, uh, um, say, uh, online book uh, that, unfortunately, uh, the sec it was stopped in the middle through the second edition, but uh, it has a lot of... Uh, information, um, deep uh, deep knowledge information about JavaScript, uh, uh, other online books. Uh, so mm, you just put JavaScript into the browser, and you will have hundreds of, of pages. Mm. Um, you can maybe have a look at this website that I, uh, that I mentioned. If you find some more interesting ones, uh, please share them mm, into, in, into on Slack so that we can have a look. Uh, and so we can. There's a, there are so many resources out there, which is maybe difficult to keep track of the best ones. 
Okay, so if uh, we if you find some which is really good, uh, then uh, we can share it. Uh, this is for documentation for information. Okay, for um, tools, uh, we are going to use uh, uh, the Node JS interpreter, which is a JavaScript interpreter that uh, we need to uh, install. I sent you some, uh, some information about installing that uh, on uh, on our system. But in the first part of the course will be the runtime environment for our application. In the second part of the course will be the um, the runtime environment for the server part of the application. While the client part will be will, will run in our browser. That may be Chrome, maybe Firefox, maybe Safari, or whatever. Or the kind of application we are doing, uh, they are you know, uh, basically on the on the feature parity. Um, you can install them directly from Node.js website if you are on Windows. If you are on a Linux distribution, uh, we suggest to go to this website where you can have the packages for Ubuntu, Debian, or whatever distribution you are using hmm? um, for running them. We are trying to use the latest stable version, so version 16 LTS. You know, LTS stands for long-term long support, which uh, every now and then they are releasing new versions, but uh, once in a year they, 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 they freeze the version. So it would be not so convenient if, you, if we, we switch versions in the middle of the course. So if we stay with uh, LTS, we can be sure that for one year there will be no surprises, except maybe maintenance uh, uh, versions of that. Okay, so right and now the latest version out, uh, I think it's uh, 17 point, some, point something, but we'll uh, stay with the, with the 16 version. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they, they, there are some little incompatibilities, so it's better to keep aligned on this version. And of course, with React, uh, we'll, there will be a couple of plugins uh, for Chrome and Firefox that we, we want to use for helping us to debug. And uh, as a programming environment uh, for writing code and developing the application, uh, we suggest to use uh, the Visual Studio Code, but if you are familiar with uh, WebStorm by JetPlanes, it also works. Uh, some people were using also the Eclipse uh, web uh, platform, something like that. I find it quite not, not, not very user-friendly, but anyway, we are writing JavaScript. The development environment is uh, free to use, uh, uh, free for you to choose. In the course, we are using code because it's a uh, Simple and uh, and uh, lightweight, maybe. Uh, practically, what I, I personally I'm doing, but I'm not requiring it. Just telling you, I'm working on a, on a Windows computer, and uh, I prefer to run the Node code on a Lin on a Linux machine. Okay, so I'm using the um, WSL feature of Windows, Windows system for Linux. Uh, where inside Windows you can install a, a Linux distribution uh, and, and, and have the, the two running together. And the Visual Studio Code has a very nice feature which is called the, the um, it can connect, you can run the front end, the graphical editor on the Windows part, and it will connect to a back end hidden from you on the, on the, on the Linux part on the WSL window. So basically, we are writing and editing code on the Windows part of the machine, and we are running it on Windows, but all the front end of the graphics uh, is on, on, on the Windows part. And there's a very powerful feature of Visual Studio Code. You can do that here, like I'm doing, or you can also do that uh, on a, um, uh, sorry, not in this menu, uh, uh, on, a, on a remote machine, machine with uh, an SSH uh, connection. So you can actually edit and run the code on a remote machine by running the editor on your local machine. And it's something that not all uh, not all editors are able to do, and I find this uh, convenient for this reason. Okay, so here you see that uh, I have a Linux prompt uh, on the Windows machine because in, automatically it say it was open by me. Okay, but just a, a detail. This is how, how I work, I will develop, uh, but uh, you are free to work directly on your Windows or Mac machine. Whatever. Just be careful about uh, the, the case of the files and the folders, okay? Because Windows is not case sensitive, Mac is not case sensitive, Linux is, and so uh, we uh, we 
must uh, check okay that we are not naming things wrong okay but that's for for later um any questions any topic i forgot about okay i'm not asking if you if you like it because i don't care or i know um okay so we can start maybe let me split the recording